Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Bangkok, Thailand. Today, we are on our way to Seyam, which is one of the biggest shopping districts in Bangkok. So we are gonna do a bunch of shopping. We are gonna visit a couple of museums. And then we're also gonna proceed on to Pratunam, which is a major clothing shopping market area as well. That's the plan for today. But before we do that, we're gonna stop to eat some duck, roast duck. To get to Seyam, you could just jump on the BTS and head straight to Seyam Station. Uh, but we're gonna stop off at Samyan Market, which is kind of uh, a little bit before the before the Seyam area, and so we decided to just jump in a quick tuk tuk. We just got off the tuk tuk in an area called Samyan, which is very near to the famous Chulalongkorn University. And the thing about tuk-tuks is they are kind of fun to ride, but actually when we live in Bangkok, we actually very, very rarely take them because they are actually more, typically more expensive than taking a taxi and not as comfortable. But when you do come to Bangkok, it is always fun to take a tuk-tuk a couple times just for the, the fun of the ride. This restaurant is called Soi Hok Pochana and they specialize especially in roast duck but also in other roast meats. They also have roast pork belly called mukrab which is also delicious but I didn't order any of that today. I just went straight for the duck and also they do a special duck dish here. Uh, but I also ordered uh, some dumplings, some kyunam and I'm gonna start with that because it's hot and fresh. I can't remember if they're with pork or with shrimp um, but anyway and then there's some like cha siu uh, pork in it as well, barbecue pork, and let me taste this. Oh yeah, that's marvelous. I think that's minced pork, maybe a little bit of shrimp in there as well. And I will just add in a little bit of chili flakes in here. All right, and let me eat one more of those dumplings before proceeding onwards. Those are very good. They also have here kanam jeep, which are like show my little dumplings. And these are shrimp and I guess pork. Oh, that, that is very slippery. Let me prong one with the little fork and then to dip in vinegar. And there's some dry roasted fried garlic. Oh, oh that works well. It sticks. They are pretty much very, very smooth and very soft all the way through um, and kind of kind of spongy. I'm still waiting on another duck dish, which is one of my favorite duck dishes here. Uh, but to, to begin with, I got khao na pe, which is just rice topped with duck. And you can see, just look at that golden skin and then duck meat. And then they put on some of the, the duck juice as well. So. Oh, okay, I gotta get a little piece with that skin, that golden skin. And they really roast a duck well here. They use a, a really hot furnace. I have seen it before in the back. That meat is succulent. It's not sweet. It's just perfectly salty and yeah, just really highlights that duck meat. Their specialty dish here is the kapao pet yang, which is the maybe the ultimate fusion of Thai and Chinese marriage combined. Roast Chinese style duck, then cut into pieces, and then stir fried in a wok, kapao style, Thai style, with holy basil. There's chilies in here, there's garlic, and it is just a beautiful thing. Just look at those ingredients. The duck, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm putting this on my rice. And the rice already has that nice duck juices. That 
is a beautiful thing. It is that same awesomely good roast duck, but then stir fried with soy sauce, with chilies, with lots and lots of garlic, and then that peppery, basil-y, green, fresh touch from the holy basil that just elevates it to new levels of delicious. I am a little bit embarrassed to say I was so excited to eat that plate of gapao pet yang that I totally forgot about the sauce that goes with the, the rice and duck combination. Uh, so I, yeah, I totally forgot about that and I ate almost the entire plate. I'm on my last bite, so I'll just add some of the sauce that goes with that right now. Oh yeah. Mm, that gives it some nice sourness. Plus just a tad of sweetness as well. That was a superb way to start the day. The roast duck is very good there and their stir-fried duck with holy basil is awesomely good. We're now walking towards Sayam and we are gonna go to Jim Thompson House. So we walked clear through the university. We are now at National Stadium, right? The BTS station is right uh, above us and Jim Thompson House is right across the street. You gotta kinda walk all the way down to the end of the street and then right up ahead here is the Jim Thompson House. And there is a 150 baht entrance fee. Jim Thompson was an American businessman who came to Thailand to start a silk company. So he's very famous and well known for Thai silk. Uh, but he lived very local Thai style and really um, submerged himself into the local culture. And as the story goes, he went to Malaysia and he mysteriously disappeared and nev was never heard from again. And so that is, that is what I know about the story. We are here at the house now. I've been here once a long time ago, so here again. And we're about to walk around the house, but I believe they don't allow any photography inside, so I'll just try to get some shots of outside. But it's a really, really nice complex here. There are some, there's a cafe. There are some batik shops, there's the Thai silk store, and then we're gonna go into his house. You have to be part of a tour to walk around inside the Jim Thompson house, so you just check in and then they give you a time. So we have to wait about 15 minutes to until our tour will start and then we're gonna walk around the house. We just finished our tour that took about 35 minutes walking around the house. The house is incredibly nice, uh, beautiful wood as well as a very unique collection of antiques that Jim Thompson collected. And one of the interesting things is that a lot of the antiques within his house are broken. And so he would take a lot of the broken antiques that people didn't want and then he would store them in his house. But just a beautiful house and a nice garden area um, well worth coming in for the tour. Just about a five minute walk from Jim Thompson house is MBK Shopping Mall. And then across from MBK Shopping Mall is BACC, which stands for the Bangkok Art and Culture Center. And they have a variety of exhibitions uh, running all the time at the Art Center. But one of my favorite places to go at the Art Center is a coffee shop. And it is definitely time for a cup of coffee right now. One of the reasons I love to come to Siam the most is to come to this coffee shop, which is called Gallery Drip, and they make some of the finest drip coffee in Bangkok uh, using good quality coffee and then just precise uh, brewing drip methods. Uh, but I ordered a one called Bamyang, which is from Chiang Rai, Northern Thailand. That is a, the coffee bean. And I'm just gonna take a whiff. It smells like a berry patch. It's so smooth and just, yeah, there's absolutely no acidity to it. And it has kind of a chocolatey berry flavor all at the same time. That's good stuff. That was a seriously good and artistic cup of coffee. If you love coffee, and if you, especially if you love drip coffee, great place here at BACC, right in Sayam. And you might recognize this area from day one. 
in Bangkok, we actually passed through here to take that river boat to the Khao San area. And so the river boat is right that direction down the, to the canal. Uh, but we're gonna head in that direction across the street there to MBK now. We are at MBK Shopping Center now, which is one of the most famous shopping centers in Bangkok. There's kind of a mixture between stores as well as kind of street, indoor street shopping, but a lot and a lot of stuff. You can get lost in here, all sorts of stuff to walk around and see. And I need to buy a new camera bag, so that's what I'm gonna go look at and try to find. Trip to MBK was successful. I needed a camera bag and I successfully just bought one. And this is kind of a fanny packish style camera bag. We decided to come up to the, I think this is the sixth floor, uh, and it is a major food court, and they have a lot of different things that you can choose to eat. This is a good place to get a variety of different dishes and in a pretty friendly environment. I chose to eat at the vegetarian food stall at the food court, which is a place I've eaten before, and I made a very, very old video uh, at this at this place. And they've done a little bit of renovation in this food court, so pretty nice. And so this is all vegetarian food. Uh, this is a dish called lab, but normally it's made with minced pork, but this time it's made with tofu. And then I could not order Thai vegetarian food. One of my favorite dishes is, in Thai it's called het hom, and they are shiitake mushrooms. And so, self-service, you can add as much chilies as you want. I'm gonna try that lab. Mm, that's pretty good. The tofu is very crumbly, almost like cottage cheese. And then let me grab a bite of the mushrooms. Oh yeah. I like to call these steak mushrooms because they're, they're almost meaty but so hearty. I love the flavor. And yeah, these are my, a couple of my favorite Thai vegetarian dishes. We are finished at MBK. Very successful trip. And I got my new camera bag. It is a, a waist pack and I'm pretty excited about it uh, because I used to always have that shoulder bag and it has the strap on one shoulder and my shoulder gets sore. So I'm trying out this waist bag we are now walking to another museum which is called the Suan Pakad Palace Museum and it should take about 15 or 20 minutes to walk there. That's our next place and then after that we're going to Pratunam which is another big shopping market. Bad news, we walked all the way to the Suan Pakad Palace Museum and they have just closed. It's like 3.56 p.m. and they close at 4 p.m. Unfortunately, it's too late for us to get in so we missed it, uh, but I have been in here before and it is also a good museum consisting of a couple of old Thai style houses, wooden houses, uh, with a really nice collection of antiques and other pieces of art as well as ancient uh, sculptures and all sorts of stuff. So if you get here in time, it's a good museum to visit. We walked in a full square from MBK, and now we are coming back around. Uh, the Bayok Sky Tower is right to the right of me, and then we are walking directly towards Pratunam Market. And this is one of the busiest shopping areas and busy busiest, like, densest areas of Bangkok. And a lot of street shopping and just a lot of things in general. So this is a, one, probably one of the most popular shopping markets in Bangkok. We just made a right onto a small alleyway within the market. And in some ways, it's very similar to the Jatu Jack weekend market. You can find a lot of the same similar stuff, uh, but this market is open, I think all every day, uh, especially during the week, you can come here and lots of clothing especially and it also really caters to wholesale so they sell by bulk but also individual pieces. We just emerged from the maze of Pratunam Market and across the street now is the gigantic Platinum Market. Oh, hello. Ah, to see you in your video at YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from? Malaysia. Malaysia, okay. So down this road, you will find a number of shopping malls, major, major shopping malls. Platinum is a huge wholesale fashion mall. And then if you keep walking down this road, you'll get to a mall called Pantip Plaza, which is a big IT mall. 
Uh, you can find computers and electronics and all sorts of stuff there. This is one of the busiest and the best places to go shopping in Bangkok, but oh, what is that? Oh, fried chicken. But I don't really need to do any shopping right now, so we're just gonna walk through and we are gonna continue on to the central world area. From Platinum Mall as well as Pratunam, if you continue walking down the road, you will get to Central World, which is a mega indoor mall. So that is the direction we're heading. Lots of traffic now. It is starting to become the evening. During the daytime, right along this wall, just outside of Central World, actually right between Central World Shopping Mall and Pratunam, there are usually closed vendors during the daytime. But right at about 6 p.m., the entire scene shifts to street food. And so the, the clothing vendors all scramble to put away their carts and roll away. And in rolls a bunch of street food restaurants, uh, mostly Isan foods. So uh, from the northeastern region, there's a lot of grilled fish and grilled chicken and somtam green papaya salad. And it's a, a lovely environment. And so it's right at 6 p.m. Most of the stalls are still setting up, so we chose one right in the middle to eat at. Okay, the main reason to come here is to eat bap pao, which is roasted fish, salt crusted. And a couple days ago at the Klong Lap Mayom floating market, we had a different type of fish, which was the snakehead fish, that, that pretty ugly, long and slender snake looking fish. Uh, this one is a tilapia, so in Thai it's called a planin. And so it is salt crusted and grilled. And I will just take my spoon and just kind of dip that into the, the sauce. Mm. Well, that is extremely juicy. They stuff it with lemongrass and kaffir lime leaves, and maybe there's some galangal in there as well. We also got a plate of hoi krang, which are blood cockles, and these are boiled with uh, kaffir lime leaves and lemongrass. Let me grab one. And the reason they are called blood cockles is because, wait until I open it. Oh, there we go some brown bloody like juice okay and the and you gotta oh oh yeah these are good classic blood cockles blood cockles definitely need some sauce I'm just gonna actually add the the cockle to my spoon with the sauce okay there we go mm. yeah don't let that bloody water that comes out of the blood cockle turn you off they are pretty good. They're kind of like clams, but definitely a lot uh, earthier, kind of dirtier tasting. Okay, this one is thumb sap, and there are tomatoes in here. Uh, this is a sour Isan soup. Well, that's nice and salty. And that tomato is fall apart tender. It's been boiled in, in that soup for a while, so it just sort of disintegrates. And then this one is lab het which is mushrooms uh, made into a lab style salad. There should be some kao kua, which is toasted sticky rice powder. And then there are some herbs in here, some green onions, some mint, and that's basically it, and shallots. Mm. That one is good. Oh, that's nice and sour and salty. And then can't eat isan food without having a plate of somtam pupala. It's not very spicy. We just finished with that meal. The food was all right, uh, but definitely not the best quality. Not the best. We're now walking past Central World now. There's a lot going on, a lot of food, snacks, and a lot of shopping. And we're heading to the BTS station. We're gonna catch the BTS back to Saton Station. We arrived back to our area of town in Saton. It has been a good day. We did a lot of things in Sayam, and even though we missed the Suan Pakat Palace Museum, uh, we got quite a bit of shopping done. We are gonna go back to the hotel now and call it a day, so I'm gonna end the vlog here. Thank you all very much for watching today's vlog, and if you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. 
And also, if you know anyone who would enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you would share this with them. And I will see you tomorrow for the next video. Tomorrow we have a big food day coming up. And thank you again for watching. Good night from Bangkok.